Hey guys, welcome back to another Garmin Marine webinar. I'm John Spittle and I am joined today with Dow Thornton. So, uh, hey, hey John, Dow, how's how it you? going? I'm good. How are you, John? Good. We wanted to give you kind of a sneak preview or post view of what we actually just announced at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show and uh, run through the new product lineup and everything that we just announced. So here we go. As always, if you have any questions, please contact us at marine.training at garmin.com and we will answer your questions in a timely manner. Please make sure to include in the subject heading that this is for the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show announcements. And then we'd be happy to go ahead and answer any questions. As always, we will put these webinars up on our Garmin YouTube channel. So please visit us at the Garmin YouTube channel. Uh, go to the home section there, scroll down to Marine, and all the way over to the right, you're gonna see the webinar series. So everything that we've done, we've archived there, and you can go back and take a look at it. Uh, we have a lot of good information there. Um, make sure you go ahead and check that out. So what we're gonna talk about today, here's our agenda. We want to make sure to cover, and really, Dad, we, we have a lot of different products here in uh, this particular boat show announcement, don't we? Yeah, it's uh, we're covering a pretty wide gamut here. Uh, so we we have the uh, the new new Striker Cast and the Striker Cast Vivid series. Um, the new transducers with the GT56 and the GT36 we'll go over. Uh, the new Echo Map UHD bundles. Uh, we're also going to talk about the new GPS Map uh x3 series the new 7 9 and 12 inch and you know those are uh, announced at lauderdale but we also have already announced a gmr phantom radar the 254 and 256 we're going to make sure we go over that um uh, the new on deck with telematics that's a pretty cool uh, new device uh been a long time coming and the new gps antenna the 24x day pretty pretty good stuff yeah so we have you covered from really the shoreline to offshore that's, and that's true actually go over today so let's go ahead and get this started with striker cast um this is something that's pretty neat with what we did with this and let's go ahead and go here so striker cast what is it 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 it's a bobber okay that provides you the shore it, it, it's good for shore fishing ice fishing kayakers and it gives you ability to identify fish and structure from the shoreline uh yeah, one it, of our yeah go ahead Don. no yeah you're right john it, it's basically a portable sonar how many times have you know like you know i've been on a camping trip or you know i do a lot of four wheeling in the woods and i, I come up to a lake and i always have my rod on me my man i wish i had a sonar so now with the striker cast um you know i can basically connect that with the 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 app on the phone that which we're going to go over and I, I've got a sonar with me anywhere I, it, I, I I can carry that anywhere yeah we have two versions so you're going to have one with sonar and then we'll, one with sonar and GPS and let's go ahead and take a look at them simple easy two versions like I said you have the striker cast and striker cast GPS uh, first off simple and easy to use download the app it's for iOS or Android. Um, it, it allows you to interpret the sonar that you can see in, on your phone and really identify what's beneath your bobber. Uh, you have yeah. the quick draw community access too. Yeah, Dow? Yeah, no, no. It's, and, and I was just going to mention, it's real simple to set up, guys. So basically all you do is download the app. Uh, pair pair the uh, striker cast or the striker cast GPS and you're really ready to go yeah and if you use the one with GPS you have that trick draw community access and then you can make your own quick draw and we'll we'll kind of go over that too so it's lightweight it's rugged so we made it really tough so when you're you know like when Dow's casting and he keeps on hitting that dock it's going to hold up <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know me too well yes <laughs> waterproof to ipx7 so it's a uh, rugged waterproof uh water depths up to 150 feet and then it's rechargeable so it has an internal battery uh up to about 10 hours so pretty and, much all day long you'll be able to use this and a couple of things i want to add is that you know john talked about how durable it is and this is designed to be cast out 
So once you cast it out, um, the the actual battery, the battery life, how we get 10 hours out of it is when that bobber basically hits the water, it basically turns on. So um, once it's out of the water, it'll automatically shut off. So that's how we're going to get that prolonged hours of use out of it. And uh, remember, guys, this is the throw out and you can see the sonar on your phone. You're still going to have to you're still going to need a rod, another fishing rod with you, with your lure, your bait on it. So once you throw this striker cast out and you actually see the fish, see the structure over uh, that you that you want to fish, uh, then you throw your lure. OK, so no, I just want to make sure it's no lure attaches to the steady cast. So you will need either just to throw it out or throw it out with a rod and then have another rod with your bait on it. So like we said, easy to pair to your uh, phone. I think this over here is a, that's a picture of you right there down, right? Fishing from the shoreline. Yeah, man. I was thinking about this. If this was something that came out 30 years ago, th this would be a cool little gift for a kid. You know, you've got your, oh. your smartphone, you've got this. It would be awesome for all those little ponds that I fished as a kid. Exactly. And, and I also thought of, you know, ice fishing. Uh, you know, this is a great tool for you ice fishermen out there. Maybe maybe you've got, you know, seven or eight holes drilled in the ice. And instead of having to pick up your sonar, you know, uh, your portable kit, move it from hole to hole to hole, uh, you can send your kit around to each each of the ice holes and drop that sonar in it real quick, drop the steady cast in and see if there's any fish over there uh, and not have to move everything. So I think it's ideal for ice fishing as well. Yeah, so you can see too, you've got some really good images. It's showing here our 2D traditional sonar. All right, so StrikerCast, like we said, mobile app for Android or iOS, easy to interpret 2D sonar. Um, it does have a flasher mode too. A lot of guys that are ice fishing might want to use something like that. And simple settings within the app itself. So for gain and range, that's the main thing that you're going to actually manipulate when you're in the app itself. And then now we do quick draw contours. Want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's uh, that's very popular. So quick draw contours is, let's say you find that lake and, you know, you know, fish are going to hang on a ledge or a drop, but you know, you're looking out at that lake or that pond and you don't know where that ledge, that drop or that structure is. So, you know, you can throw out steady cast and then with the G with the GPS model, uh, you can actually record basically one foot contours of that lake or that pond. So you can map that pond as you're reeling it back in or pulling it back in and, uh, you know, find those great spots. Pretty, pretty nice option there. Yeah, and over on the left-hand side, you're going to see this is what quick draw contours are. So yep. if you have an area here, like in the white, there's no bathymetric chart data there because the striker cast did not go over that particular area. Or in this example, it was probably from our community that we actually downloaded this information. So you can do it either way. You can actually create your own quick draw contours or download from the community. And then make sure, you know, you want to attach 20 pound test or higher fishing line and then use the uh, stainless steel swivel. Uh, the tether rope is good for what Dow was saying too. If you have, if you're ice fishing, you have a bunch of different holes, you could just drop it down in that hole and kind of see what's beneath. You know, also, also John, for ki the kayaker out there, you know, if they just want to throw that tether out, pull that, uh, pull that steady cast, you know, behind them. Uh, and then when they go over spots, they, uh, they can mark those fish. Yeah, that's a really good point. So simple for that kayaker. Yep. Next up, what do we have here? We have the Striker Vivid series. And how do you and I kind of talk about the Striker series, Dow, when we're well, talking to people and training them? Yeah, we just want to remember, remind people that, you know, the Striker series is a fish finder. You know, that's what it was made to do. A sonar, um, you know, it does have a built-in GPS, so you can mark, you know, up, I think these will hold up to 5,000 waypoints, but there's no mapping in these units. Now you can build mapping through what we talked about earlier, quick draw, but there's no mapping in these. So, so think of these as a, uh, a fish finder sonar that, that has a free basic GPS built in. I think that's the best way to put it. It's yeah. a sonar with a free GPS. 
Yeah. And so with that, you've got position information, you can mark waypoints, and then you can create in this vivid series, quick draw contours. Right. So if you're right. on a budget, you know, and you don't need all the bells and whistles, you've got a pretty good choice that you can get here. And then we added additional color palettes. Right. And you can mark, again, like John said, you can mark waypoints. You can mark that boat ramp. It'll leave a track as you, as you, uh, you know, paddle or s drive your boat and then you can follow that, that path back. So it does, it, it, it is full of, of, uh, some really neat options. So like we said, the striker vivid series is an update to the striker plus series. And we added new color palettes to this series itself. Uh, it, this will allow you to distinguish really what's on the bottom when you're looking for structure or fish. It gives you that ability to really differentiate between the bottom and a tree and rock and so forth. Um, the look and feel is going to stay the same. Just remember too here that the vivid color palettes are not available on the Striker Plus devices. Right. So if you have, unfortunately, if you have a unit you purchased last year or two years ago, um, you won't be able to update because you, you can't update these units. You won't be able to get those uh, new vivid uh, color palettes. Give you an idea of the lineup. So we have from a four inch screen all the way up to a nine inch screen. Remember, if you see four CV, uh, that generally determines the diagonal screen size. And then CV means it has traditional sonar and clear view. So we have a four inch, five inch, seven inch. That 7CV has traditional and clear view sonar. 7-inch SV has all three sonars built in. So you get the entire bundle packaged together with your transducer at that price and then all the way up to a 9-inch screen. Yeah, these are these are really economical. And uh, like I said, they're packed with features. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have the Striker 4 and the Striker Plus 4, and nothing is changing in these two models. They're, they're going to stay the same. The Striker 4 for 119 and the Striker Plus for 139. Now, the difference, the Striker Plus 4, that's going to have the quick draw capabilities. So for $139, you're going to get a, a sonar, you're going to get a GPS built in, and you're going to have the ability to draw your own mapping using quick draw. That's the big difference between the Striker 4 and the Striker Plus 4. And a little bit larger screen in the Striker Plus 4. So you're looking at true like 4-inch diagonal with a 3.5 for the regular Striker 4. Now, the Striker 4 for $119 still has a GPS built in. So you just don't get quick draw capabilities. But if you want to mark waypoints to get you back there and you want to see your traditional sonar, you have that capability for a pretty low price. So we talked about the color palettes here. We have seven new color palettes. Um, the, the nine old color palettes will remain. So you have a multitude of colors to choose from. What looks good to your eye when you're trying to distinguish the bottom? If you're looking for structure, if you're looking for any kind of rock, hard bottom, soft bottom, you have a better ability here where you have, you know, in the rust steel, lava, Caribbean, and floodlight, you can see different colors here in order to distinguish this bottom, you know, and and kind of experiment out there. What looks good to you in the sunlight? How can you see the bottom? How can you interpret what you see down there? Yeah, and I, I change mine frequently. If I'm on a normal fishing, on a normal day on the water, I may change color palettes, you know, three to four times based on morning, based on where the sun is in the sky. And there's a lot of times where I don't really see great structure at one color palette. I'll change it and all of a sudden I can, you know, everything on the bottom pops and I can see those fish and I can uh, see those suspended targets. We even see it with our pros. Each pro has their own, you know, uh, preferences to what kind of color palette and how they're actually utilizing it. Exactly. Some guys like certain colors for bait. If they're trying to find bait, they'll switch to a certain color palette. Uh, and, and then when they're actually targeting bass or uh, crappie or anything like that, they'll change to a different color palette. So what's nice about this, especially if, if you're giving this as a gift or if you're buying it for yourself, remember with Garmin, we try to make it really easy for you. It's in the box. So when you go and you see this striker on the shelf, in the box, you get the striker fish finder, transducers included, power cable, tilt mount, hardware, and documentation. So simple, easy, mounted on 
your boat, your kayak, and then go out fishing. Yeah, you can feel confident that when you grab that box, everything's in it to mount it. All right, brand new transducers, Dow. So what, what did we do with the GT56 and 36 here and with the bundles? Yeah, that these are pretty cool. The, these have, uh, of course, the, the bundles are, are all going to have the new vivid colors, uh, but the, the new uh, UHD GT56 is going to be included in the box with the new, uh, the new vivid, uh, the vivid series. And really, the, the two options, the GT56, that's the UHD, and that's going to have your side view, clear view, and your Chirp traditional built into it. Uh, we've gone to a 455-800 as well as a 1 megahertz. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to allow that transducer to go a little deeper, okay? So you're going to be able to get a little deeper and a little wider with the uh, 1 megahertz, especially on side view and clear view. And then the GT36, that transducer is just... Um, clear view and side view. So that does not have traditional sonar, 2D sonar built into it. So for you guys that are running like a GT8 or a GT50, a GT15, I'm sorry, in haul or a, G, uh, a B60 through haul, this is the transducer that you're going to want to use with that Y cable because it doesn't have traditional sonar in it. Uh, if you're just using a transom mount or a trolling motor, you know, you can go with the, uh, the GT56. Yeah, and so that's a good point to make. There's a lot of people that will actually use this GT36 because they want that in-haul or shoot through the hull for their traditional sonar because they're not losing bottom at speed when they're up and running from spot to spot. And then when they drop down, they can then utilize with that Y cable all three sonars at once using the 36. Yep. So. And and really the, the big upgrade from the GT56 from the GT54 in uh, this year's models is that the GT54 was a uh, 1.2 megahertz. So um, going down to a one, you're not losing anything. You're just gonna get that 20% greater range. So that's the big thing with the GT56. Yeah, so increasing the depth by just decreasing the frequency, um, it's, it's a huge difference, you know, 20% difference in that. Uh, keep in mind, too, that this transducer is longer. So with the elements longer, we're able to get a better image. This is a six inch uh, as opposed to the four inch in the GT54. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's a good point, John. You may struggle putting this one on a trolley motor. You may have to do some adapting. So you may have to go with the transom out on the, with this. Kind of more of the breakdown here, price-wise. So you're looking at the GT36 is going to run you about 400. That's U.S. retail, and then 450 for the GT56. And we'll get into it also. But if you notice down here, the models that it'll work with the 84, 8600 XSV. XSV indicates that that has a built-in sonar, and then the EchoMap Ultra, and then EchoMap UHDs. So these are the brand new bundles. These are the uh, UHD, SVs, and a seven and a nine, and then the ultras in a 10 and a 12. So seven and nine inch screen, 10 and 12 inch screens. They're bundled with that GT56. Gives you all the new color palettes built into it, and then 20% greater range. And, 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 oh, I'm sorry, John. No, go ahead. No, I also wanted to mention that we we did do some uh, some other sonar enhancements through software. Uh, so uh, if you've got older units, you want to make sure you continue to do your software updates. Absolutely, absolutely. So and then don't forget that these will support live scope sonar in the seven, nine, tens, and twelve. Here's the uh, here's the bundles here. Um, from the 7, 73, 74, 93, 94. Just remember, so the 7 indicates the diagonal screen size, and then the second number indicates, is it inland lakes for the U.S., or is it coastal offshore? So the 3 is inland lakes, and then the 4 indicates coastal offshore, and then the 93 and 94, same thing. 
the the other other thing I would like to mention is that remember, guys, if if you're going to connect or if you have two units or three units on the boat uh, with the Echo Map series, you can network those units together. The Striker series, you cannot network those units together. So that means you can't have two units on the boat and use one transducer. When you go up to the Echo Map series, the Echo Map UHDs and the Echo Map Ultras, and all the way through the GPS Map series, you can network using a network a plug uh, and connect these units together so they will share waypoints. Uh, it, they will share sonar. It, just remember though, keep keep your families together. Correct. Echo Map can only network with Echo Map, and GPS Map can only network with GPS Map. You can't uh, connect an Echo Map to a GPS Map. Keep that in mind. That's a great point. And and I guess when you're when you're purchasing a unit, um, you know, if you say, you know, I may add another unit next year. Uh, you, you probably want to go from the striker up to the echo map unit. So you have that capability of connecting the two. If and when we say a, network, it's an ethernet cable. It's so an it's ethernet a simple cable. Correct. Plug and play ethernet cable, and then you're good to go. Correct. And then these are the ultra series. So remember with the ultra series too, for the US versions, the, the 106 SV and 126 SV, these actually include both inland lakes and coastal waters for the US. That's a great point. There's your color palette. So pretty neat. Um, I can't wait to see it and get out on the water and and actually load it to uh, my 8600 series and take a look at these color palettes here. Yeah, I think I think you're going to be very impressed with the uh, the clarity uh, uh, of of what you're seeing on the bottom and how those fish are really going to pop and stand out now. So now let's take a look here. So we kind of went, you know, shoreline, entry level, mid range, and now let's get up into the GPS map series. And this is where we really tie together our entire GPS map series together, you know, from seven inch all the way up to a, a 24 inch screen with the X3 series. So three brand new units, the GPS map, 7x3, 9x3, and 12x3. Okay. The X is just a placeholder depending on how you're going to purchase it. Do you want a worldwide unit where it doesn't have built in cartography charting, or do you want to get a 743, which has the US inland and coastal charts built in with blue chart G3 with Navionics information? So that's, that's the lineup that you're going to see. And you take a look at it, it really ties together with the entire rest of the lineup now, all the way up into the 8600 series. So Dow, what did we do with these here? Well, with the with the new units, with the new 3X3 series, uh, improved display, so higher resolution, uh, you know, nearly twice the processing power. So that, that, that's huge. Um, so they have the feel and the look of the 8600s as well. Uh, which I know that a lot of boat builders are going to be happy with that. Uh, improved sonar, so they will all do a, a 1K single channel chirp, and now they have side view built in. So last year's models or this year's models, the 7X2 series or 9X2, they do not have side view. So um, the new units do include side view for 2021. So that's a really good point. Now you can get you know, the seven inch unit and nine inch unit has a single 12 pin transducer on the back in order for you to get the, all three sonars built in at one time. Plug a transducer in and you have traditional chirp, clear view chirp and side view chirp. So it, yeah. it really ties the whole family together with that. Yeah, definitely. IPS displays too in the, in the nine inch and the 12 inch, so in-plane switching means that you can actually see those screens at any angle. So if you have full sunlight on there, it makes it really easy to see those screens. Edge to edge glass, that's what we brought from the premium series of the 8600 down into this series now. Uh, the look and feel, we did move the uh, SD card slot to the back. So it's on the back, it's a micro SD and it's two of them on the back of the unit itself. Preloaded, 
Like I said before, if you want to get the 70, 743, 943, um, those actually have blue chart G3 coastal charts and Lakeview G3 inland maps preloaded into that unit with Garmin and Navionics content. Obviously, we have auto guidance built into those. So if you want to know how to go from where you're at to your fishing spot, we will give you a suggested route with auto guidance. And then all the wireless integration that you can think of from Wi-Fi for your active captain app, Bluetooth for smartphone notifications, integrated AMP technology to connect, let's say your Aquatix Marine Watch, your GWIN uh, wireless sensor, a grid 20. So if you wanna be able to control this screen remotely, you can connect our grid 20, and now you have a multi-touch screen and a remote control device with a rotary knob in order if you want something to easily control the screen two different ways. Wireless remotes and a lot more that we can add to this. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, we talked earlier about going from a striker up to the Echo Map unit. Why would somebody want to go from an Echo Map or an Echo Map UHD, Echo Map Ultra up to a GPS map series? Well, now you have radar capability. You have XM uh, weather with it. You can add a GXM 54. So a lot more capabilities with the GPS map family. Yep. And this is kind of a breakdown. Dow and I wanted to keep this in here to kind of compare to, you know, last year's version of the X2 models, you know, 742, 942, 1242. We improved the displays, higher resolution screens. We added IPS displays to the 9 and 12 inch models, faster processor. I think this is a big thing right here, too, is the side view, you know, for the seven and nine. It's huge. That that's 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 really big. I like really big. Smaller footprint. So what did we do now when we first got our 743 that we were talking last week about it? You know, we pulled them out of the box and I called John. I'm going, John, I can't believe this is a seven inch unit. It's so, it you know, it's so small. But by reducing the footprint, taking that SD card out uh, off the side and, and all that trim work you get if you're if you're used to looking at the x2 series and moving that card reader to the back now it's basically seven inch you know from edge to edge uh so it's a really very nice appealing looking uh unit i had to take my tape measure out and i'm like <laughs> oh, no there's no way so i took it out and i'm like yep nope, seven inch diagonal screen yeah and i do want to make a point that that we did add uh these units are coming with an sd card an eight gigabyte sd card uh, preloaded into them because we know a lot of guys are mounting these flush mounted into the dash and to use the active captain app and to do software updates and things like that you you need to have access to that you need a card in there so uh these all come with an eight gig card uh in one of the uh sd card slots yeah so make sure you download the active captain app it's free it's going to work with a broad range of garmin units here and you have to have a card in these units here, uh, a micro SD card, um, and in order for it to then connect and format different software versions, it, it kind of acts as the conduit when you're downloading that information from Active Captain to the chart plotter itself. And then that's where it actually stores quick draw data is to the card itself. Everyone likes to see what the back of the units look like here. So we've got the uh, seven inch, nine inch on the left-hand side and the 12 inch on the right-hand side. So you're gonna see you've got, you know, your your power data cable here, network cables here, uh, 12 pin transducer port. So obviously that is for, you know, all of our sonar. So now we can do side view out of this particular unit itself. Um, and then J1939 for engine data information and NEMA 2000. And then your, this is where your two micro SD card slots are. In the 12, the big difference that you're going to see over here is two network ports. Okay. And then HDMI out. So if I wanted to take that video that's on my screen itself and send it somewhere else, maybe to a television or something, you have that capability to do that. 
Dow talked about this before. Why do you want to jump up from an echo map unit to a GPS map series? Maybe you want to ra add radar. Okay, so this we've put together for the US radar bundles here in the seven, nine, and 12 inch screens, and we've added the 18 HD plus radar bundle. So you can see the part numbers and the pricing there for US. And then kind of a breakdown of the entire series here from the seven inch all the way up to the 12 inch. Couple things looking at this chart that I wanna kind of let people know. So when you see a unit that says XSV, that means that this unit is capable of all of our sonar, traditional chirp, clear view chirp, side view chirp. If you see a unit that doesn't have XSV, there's no sonar built into it, but I can still take a 743, connect to a 743 XSV with a network cable and share sonar completely over to this unit here. So just kind of remember that. So these units here do not have sonar built into it, but have all the other capabilities. Also, also with that, remember if you do pick up a 743, 943, or 1243, a non-XSV, and you want to add your sonar to it, you're going to pay around $600 to add a box, a black box that will have side view, clear view, and chirp traditional 2D in it. So you're you're only $200 away. You might as well get that XSV. Correct. So Vivid Sonar support, it's included in this Q4 software release. Um, it's going to cover the current models that are out there, like a 742, 942, 1242 Touch, um, the keyed units, the plus models, and the 8600 XSV series, which is that 10, 12, and 16 inch models. Just remember the Vivid Sonar color palettes will not be capable going back to the original 8000 series from, I don't know, five, six years ago now, Dow? Correct. And the 7600 series. Yep. And, and remember, do that, do that software update because we also enhanced a lot of the features in the sonar or, or uh, in, in the sonar. So uh, uh, improved it. So you're gonna see a, a huge improvement once you do your software update. Yeah, we're working with ping rates and a lot of things that you're not gonna see yeah. right up front in order to make that sonar work to its fullest capabilities. Um, and this is the first for us, we've come out with adapter bezels. So with this adapter bezel, it allows us to take the new X3 units and adapt to the cutout of an X2 unit. Simple, easy. This is going to be great for our boat builders or for somebody that just wants to go ahead and upgrade because maybe they maybe they purchased a, a 742XS and they really, really like it, but they were wanting to get side view. You know, and so maybe uh maybe they go ahead and uh and get some money out of their other unit and then upgrade to to this unit the adapter bezels make it simple and easy to do so we have three versions seven nine and 12 inch okay and it allows you to go ahead and upgrade or update that for instance my next slide will kind of show it but here's the adaptive bezel has the trim caps and accommodates both flush or flat mount installations in order to make that adapt. Yeah, this is gonna make it a lot easier for uh, the guys that are you know, pulling that 742 out and wanna get another unit. Don't, don't wanna drill a bigger hole, don't wanna use the, you know, that starboard material so they can buy this adapter bezel, buy a 743, uh, 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 943 uh, and, and drop it right in. Yeah, and you can see from here. So, you know, last year's version, to an X3 model in the sevens, in the nines, and then in the 1242, 1242 plus touch and 7612. So just keep in mind what that's gonna cover and a simple, easy bezel for that upgrade. We had some products that actually were announced and obviously with, um, well, staying at home, maybe a lot of people didn't really hear about this, 
Um, we wanted to go through some of the summer and fall announcements that we had. And first off is the Phantom Open, Awa Open Array Radar. Easy for me to say. <laughs> two versions, a 254 and a 256, four foot and six foot open array antenna. So 250 watts of solid state power. These are the most powerful on the market right now. It exceeds the power rating of our 25 kilowatt magnetron. When you're looking at smaller targets at a distance, these are going to be able to do that for you. We've added scan to scan average, and I have a slide coming up and a recording that'll show you what scan to scan averaging is doing, where it's actually going to enhance the detection of consistent targets. We've added MARPA with auto acquisition up to 30 targets, and then everything else you like with our Phantom lineup motion scope so we can identify moving targets are they coming towards us are they going away from us we can adjust that by a speed threshold also multi-channel operation so it's just going to increase this radar and make it last longer we can change target sizes and then obviously silent and reliable operation yep. like i said two versions six foot and four foot open array antenna and then you can see the U.S. retail pricing up there. And for the people that are looking to maybe add a radar to their boat, uh, don't have a radar right now, um, I would definitely look at the Phantom series. Uh, with the motion scope technology, you know, targets coming towards you are in red. Targets moving away from you will be in green. Uh, you know, it's very easy to, to, to know and realize what's happening on that radar screen. Yeah, the interpretation of what you see on the screen becomes really evident with motion scope. Correct. You know, and, and I think that's the easiest way. And when we actually got people out on the water, we were using motion scope. We could show people that. You know, especially we, at night, you know, I'm going down the intercoastal waterway and, you know, if I see three red targets moving, they're coming towards me. If I see three green targets, they're moving away from me and I can follow them. So, uh, just situational awareness is much easier, especially for that first time radar owner. Exactly. The other thing that we wanted to do is talk a little bit about the scanning averaging. Um, we actually have a video that we recorded here showing the difference. We're going to manipulate the range B on the right hand side and show you how we can adjust that averaging between low, medium, high to kind of clean up the screen a little bit. If you feel that it's a little bit too cluttered or this is too much seeing some of these other targets here. So let's go through and we'll kind of show you here how to get into that through our menu here. Right radar, scan average, and then we'll go low. We'll go back and then you can show, you can see how that actually kind of clean that up a little bit. And we'll do medium here. And then finally, what we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and show you the high. So it's taking those targets, it's cleaning it up. It's simple and easy to to find in in the radar filters in order to give you better situational awareness. We talked about also MARPA auto acquisition. So we can actually take and target up to 30 different targets. And in this example, the way we actually did this is a boundary. So we go to auto acquire boundaries, make a circle. And then as you can see here, this is MARPA targeting those particular targets here. So it, It'll make it easier to kind of see what's around you, target it, and give particular areas that you might want to target, um, you know, for for moving objects out on yeah, the water. Yeah, that this works great if you like to, you know, sleep out on your boat. Uh, uh, you know, you can put a guard zone around the boat. Uh, maybe there are some boats around you. You can actually acquire those boats. And if they move during the night or anybody comes into that zone, you know, it, it'll it'll like. Uh, you, you'll know exactly where they are or if they're moving. 
Next up is on deck. So on deck is going to allow you to track, monitor, and control your vessel. So introducing the on deck hub. It works in conjunction. So it comes with the GTB 10, and then you're going to connect that through your um, Active Captain app in order to view and control different systems on your vessel itself and the location of the vessel itself. Like we said, now it, it's simple and easy, right? Track, yeah. monitor, and control. Yeah, that, I think this has been a long time coming from Garmin. I've been waiting for us to come out with something like that. This where where you know I can I can be at home, and if my boat leaves the dock, it, you know uh, somebody opens the door on on the boat. If my bilge pump comes on in the middle of the night, uh, I get a text. So pr pretty nice. Yeah, are my batteries charged up? I'm going out Correct. tomorrow. You know, it, no matter where it is, if it if the boat's in the water or if it's you know at a lot in a lockup, and you want to make sure that your batteries are charged up for the next day's trip, you can go ahead and take a look. And I think we've got some screenshots that are going to come up. We also have you know you can control it. So you've got relay switches that you control remotely. It's based on and works off of the 3G and 4G LTE coverage. Uh, the GTB 10 is actually the Wi-Fi host for the vessel itself. It does have up to 48 hours of battery that's built into it. So in case for whatever reason the battery is cut, disconnected, you still have 48 hours of backup there. We do have a built-in GPS in the unit itself. And an option if you want to add an external GPS for the location. We store the information in a cloud. And then, let, like we said, we've got seven total relay switches that we'll show you in a little bit. It's worldwide coverage in most all areas or countries. And and I probably would add a couple of things is that, what, you know, make sure you're reading the owner's manual if you're going to install this. Uh, you want to make sure, you know, you put that uh, the box in a good location. Want those those antennas pointing up, you know. Um, also, when you're connecting uh, your devices, that you, you want to put a inline fuse so to each device. So uh, just just a couple of things. Just make sure you read the instructions when you're when you're wiring this box. So make sure to use the Active Captain app. This all-in-one app is going to allow you to connect to the on deck remotely. And then everything else the Active Captain app is going to do, which is, you know, helm control, chart plotter control. You know, that's when you're on the vessel itself. So a lot of other features it'll do, but Active Captain is the app, free app that you want to make sure to download to get started. And then, like we said before, monitor sensors. So with this, you can monitor bilge pump, security sensor, uh, battery voltage, temperature, shore power, position, course overground, speed overground. And this is an example from one of our sales managers. He's He's been using this for a couple months now. Actually noticed that his battery voltage had dropped. So he gets to the, gets to the vessel, and plugs it in and starts charging it to get it back up and ready for that next day fishing trip. Yes, that's pretty nice. He uh, he got that alarm that his battery was below seven and uh, uh, went down to the boat and sure enough, he had forgot to turn the switch off. Yep, so that's a good indication, kind of a reminder that, hey, look at, look at my voltages, you know, at 7.2, need to go down, charge it up and get ready for, for the next day. And this is going to send a text or an email to you. You also can have up to five people on this account. So, you know, maybe he was away from the dock. He could call the dock master and go, hey, could you go check my boat? Um, and uh, so that that's a pretty nice feature. The other feature that's here, and this is just temperature, uh, temperature sensors included. We'll show you what's included in the package when you actually buy this. But you get a temperature sensor and with um, with with his boat, it was a center console. So he just had the temperature sensor outside and that's Florida temperature in the summertime right there. So <laughs> you can tell it got a little bit hot, but we're monitoring 
these different devices over NEMA 2000. So you've got not only temperature, but fluid level, water depth position, course over ground, speed over ground, and then you can see the rest there. So we can monitor all that remotely too, and simple and easy to view on the app itself. And just another chart that we can dig down and kind of see different uh, different information. I, probably the biggest thing is, you know, turn an alarm on or off. If you have a larger boat and you've got AC and you want to make sure that you, you know, um, have the temperature in the cabin correct, you know, or it's dropping for whatever reason, maybe the uh, marina lost power and now your boat doesn't have AC, doesn't have any power on it, you're going to get a an alert at that temperature range to let you know, hey, uh, your guests might not be happy if the boat's a little bit too hot once you get down there. So. Another huge thing right now is position information. Yes, definitely. That I think that's the main reason a lot of people are gonna wanna put this on the boat. So GPS information, distance log, you can set up a geofence for a particular radius. Let's say Dave's got this set up at what, 328 feet. He's got an alarm uh, enabled. When that leaves or goes outside of that particular range, he's gonna get an alert. And so he knows that, uh, that that's alerted. He also has security sensors and location alarm, all of that. Uh, will alert him if, you know, something's open, maybe a, a hatch or a cabin door or whatever, you'll notice that we have a security sensor that comes in the bundle when you purchase it too. And one thing I want to add, uh, you know, it monitors uh, shore power. So some of the bigger boats, maybe you have a freezer, you have all your bait on board and in the middle of the night, if you lose power, it's going to send you a, an alert that your shore power is disconnected. So um, you can you can either get down there yourself or get one of the dock hands or somebody else to get down there and uh, see what the issue is. So retail, U.S. retail pricing, $849.99. There's your part number. So you get the on-deck hub, the GTB-10, a security sensor, temp sensor, shore power sensor, relay switch, power cable, in and out data cable, uh, a marine network cable, NEMA 2000 drop cable, and your T and documentation. So pretty much everything there to get you started for your initial install. Uh, you can purchase more through our accessories if you go onto Garmin.com and you look up the on-deck hub. We've got more accessories if you wanted to add another temperature sensor, or shore power sensor, security sensor, um, you can you can do that. So yes, it's subscription based. So there's two plans. You can get the annual plan, which will run you at $12.99 per month. Now remember, you do get um, a free trial for three months when you first start off, or you could just go monthly plan at $19.99 per month. No contract commitment with the $19.99 per month. And new GPS antenna. I, I think this was kind of overlooked. This was uh, a few weeks ago that we announced the brand new GPS antenna. It is the GPS 24XD. So it's our first smart antenna. It's dual frequency, multi-band. GPS antenna, sub-meter positioning, you know, so for that one meter or less position information, you're going to get this with the 24XD, and it also has a built-in magnetic heading sensor, and now tell me how that's going to benefit us here with that magnetic heading sensor built into it. Well, it's really going to help when you want to do like radar overlay. Uh, if you've ever been on a boat, you looked at the radar and, the, and you know, everything's kind of off or spinning. They never, nothing's lining up. This is going to really help improve that. And also on those boats, like, uh, let's say a bass boat, right? Yeah. The, the problem with the bass boat is when they're, you know, when they're on their trolling motor and they've got that anchor lock on, that, 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 that boat will want to spin. You know, it, it won't st stay pointing in that one direction. So this is going to improve or actually eliminate that. 
Yep. So you can get a better heading position on it. You're not going to, you're not going to have that boat kind of floating. Um, great for a, a sailboat too. So a boat that's moving at slower speeds and they see that vessel kind of turning, you know, when they're going at slower speeds, this is going to correct that. So you've got your 10 Hertz updates. Uh, you've got two different versions here, the NEMA 2000 or the HVS model, um, which is 0183 data. And it's going to be compatible with all the existing units that use the current 19X GPS antenna. Um, it, you can use this particular unit and the mount will all work together. So on behalf of Dow and myself, we wanna thank you guys for joining our webinar series here. As always, if you have any questions on this particular webinar, contact us at marine.training at garmin.com. Please put in the uh, subject heading that this is for the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show announcements and make sure to take a look at us on the Garmin YouTube channel for any archived webinars that we have. And Dow, we also did a podcast, didn't we? We did. We just started, John and I just started a new podcast called Behind the Chart Plotter, where we interview uh, a little bit of, you know, uh, pros, uh, uh, secret guests. Uh, so please check us out on uh, uh, if you if you're in the podcast. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate you joining us today and make sure that you get out on the water.